I would like to request Dr. Anil Keskar, Head R&D Cell and Advisor, Shri Balaji University, Pune, to deliver the welcome address. Chief Guest for today's function, <coughs> Honorable Sri Sekhar Singh Ji, IS, Commissioner of PCMC and CEO of Pimpri Chinchwar Smart City Limited. Professor Parmanandan Baraswar Banyam, Pro Chancellor of SBUP, Dr. Dimpal Saini Ma'am, Dean and Senior Director, Directors, Deputy Directors, my fellow colleagues and dear student managers. <coughs> it gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to all of you here today on a very important occasion of signing of an MOU with Pimpri Chinchwar Smart City Corporation. For this momentous occasion, we have today with us none other than the Honorable Sri Shekhar Singh Ji, IS Commissioner of PCMC and CEO of PCSCL. Sri Balaji University, Pune, built on the three pillars of discipline, determination and dedication, is an ongoing endeavor to transform raw talent of our student managers into future corporate leaders who can effectively handle the professional challenges and take businesses to greater heights. We believe in holistic development of our students and hence we join hands with external institutions to provide platforms to our students for their overall development. We have in the past already collaborated many national and international organizations so far to achieve our goal in this regard. Under the directives of our beloved Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, many cities in the country have taken up the development of this initiative to improve people's quality of living by using best practices, information and, informa and digital technology. Our own city of PCMC is one of them. We are really glad today that our university is getting actively associated with this initiative. It will be a pleasure for all of us to contribute our best in this respect. By getting associated with this project, we shall strive our best in whatever we can in this endeavor. Thank you very much. May I now request Professor B. Parmanandan, Pro Chancellor SBUP and President Sri Balaji Society to address the gathering. A very good morning to all of you. A very good morning to all of you. Thank you, for, uh, thank you, first of all, to be here. I know in the morning, but uh, see, everywhere, when we talk about an MOU, it's just like a starting of a relationship, you know. In any relationship, we have to think about what is there for us also. So as a university, you know, we are, on, we have, we are celebrating our 25 years today, uh, in this year. We are also thinking, times have changed. Pandemic has changed the world in a very, very different way. You also think that in classroom, in four walls, in the sitting room, that it's all going to be done. We are, we should also think about, you know, what is happening outside the world also. Today, government is playing a major, major role in different, different activities. There are a lot of new initiatives which are coming up. So as a university, we are also thinking, you know, whether we should change ourselves. You know, start challenging ourselves and, you know, start thinking in what way we can train you in a different way. There is also a major goal, you know, we, we are known for placements. We have done 22,000 MBA placement for all these years. But other than that, we have thousands of lawyers and thousands of, you know, commerce graduates who have passed out from our other colleges also. If you check our, you know, performance of law college, they are the toppers of Pune universities. It's not. <laughs> India mein padhai ka system jo hai na, thoda teda meda hota hai. Maximum hum log jaros copy ban jate hain. We are just trying to learn and learn and, you know, remember things. But application is a major challenge. Everybody here, you know, is looking for jobs and everybody gets a jobs also. The question is not only getting a job. Question is also in a nation of 1.4 billion people, how this nation will grow and how you will grow in future. Parents look so stay, you know, humko kya chahiye, stability chahiye. You know, humari life, you know, settle honi chahiye. Aapko bhi bata, aajkal stability or settle word bade purane jamane ke ho gaye. What is important today is having the right skill. 
एंड स्किल्स भी लेकिन आजकल यू नो जब देखो एक्सपायर हो जाते हैं तो सवाल क्या है कि हाउ यू सर्वाइव इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड वेर वी ग्रो ऑल्सो वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इज ऑफकोर्स योर एटीट्यूड एंड अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो टूडे यू नो वेन वी आर ट्राइंग टू टाई अप विद एन एमिनेंट पी सी एम सी म्यूनसिपालिटी प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड पी सी एम सी इज़ वन ऑफ द ह्यूज बॉडीज ऑफ इंडिया दे कंट्रोल वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट इंडस्ट्रियल बेल्ट ऑफ दिस कंट्री वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट आई टी बेल्ट ऑफ दिस कंट्री वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट फार्मा इंडस्ट्री इन द इन इंडिया दे आर ऑल लोकेटेड इन पी सी एम सी एरिया एंड सर इज मैनेजिंग द शो हेयर एंड इट्स आवर ऑनर टू हैव अ पर्सन लाइक दैट हेयर इन दिस कैंपस आवर ऑनरेबल चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ द डे मिस्टर शेखर सिंह सर who is here and uh, instead of me talking all the time you know i i would like to hear from him he is very young abhi abhi aapke zamane mein jaise hum log ka sabka dream hota hai iit se paro ya fir usa mein ja kar ek mba bhi kar lo sir has done all those things but instead of being settled there wahan pe ja kar dollar kamane se acha he has come back to this country to contribute to become part of this indian dream and it is honorable to have people like him here in this campus sir welcome to this campus and i am happy that you know <laughs> life mein humko na risk lena zaruri hai yaad rakho we want to start the initiative of our startups also this year we want to start in a different way for our juniors and seniors and mba batches also we want to start you know startups in our campus we want to start up an incubation center for them so that you know they start thinking about how to you know make your ideas into some businesses so which will allow this country to go remember aaj ki tarikh mein india is one of the largest unicorns we have you know of course there are startups are also plenty out there main do din pehle apne ek student se mila tha you know he was from bitm aur bola tha maine kanno ki chai ke teen dukane you know i have started three i have control three franchises and uh, he has he has worked in corporate industry for 3 years and he was very happy he was like theek hai sir life mein struggle hoga long hours honge but i want to do something which will make me happy so what is important today is you know trying to be happy to challenge yourself to understand your potential it's not easy remember life is not easy but life has so many opportunities for all of you jaise bala sir hamesha bolte hamesha bolte the you know problems are opportunities हर प्रॉब्लम के पीछे बहुत सारी अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ हैं तो क्वेश्चन इज वेदर विल ग्रैब इट और नॉट वेदर वी आर हंग्री और नॉट वेदर वी आर रियली रियली वांट टू डू समथिंग और नॉट और वी जस्ट वांट टू डू बॉल बचन सो फ्रॉम माय साइड लेट्स हियर फ्रॉम द सर ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर मनीषा पालेवाल डेप्यूटी हेड रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट सेल एस to brief about the collaboration between Pimpri Chinchwad Smart City Limited PCSCL and Sri Balaji University Pune yeah thank you respected dignitaries on the dais honorable shri shekhar singh ji ias ceo pimpri chinchwad smart city limited and commissioner of pcmc respected anand sir pro chancellor sbup and president sbs respected dr dimple sani madam dean and senior director speakers of the day directors deputy directors faculty members and my dear students it is my proud privilege to brief all of you about pimpri chinchwad smart city and sbup collaboration well we all know shri balaji university pune is an institution of excellence in the field of management education in india today we are entering in an mou with pimpri chinchwad smart city as anand sir just mentioned that government of india is taking various initiative so the smart city mission in india is a flagship initiative of the indian government aimed at transforming cities and towns to make them more livable sustainable and inclusive the mission encourages the development of smart cities that incorporate technology and innovation to improve the quality of life for citizen the mou will be signed for the creation of a mutual collaborative joint effort by both sbup and pimpri chinchwad smart city in order to jointly identify fields of mutual interest and create opportunities to collaborate with the government and participate in the development of smart cities with a vision 
to develop the most livable city of India by 2030, powered by sustainable and inclusive economic growth with an innovative administrative system and smart and holistic city development, Pimpri Chinchwar Smart City has been very, very successful in all its endeavor since 2017. This MOU would allow us, all of us, to work with the government to identify and implement solution for various urban challenges. Here, I would just like to grab attention of Honorable Commissioner, sir. Sir, today, uh, yesterday, the World Water Day we have celebrated in a very different way. We got an opportunity to get a virtual desk at United Nations conference. So, for half, more than half of the day. Various international and national delegations happened and the water issue was discussed. So one of the solution was that smart city mission is going to give one solution to the water crisis. So we all are eager to join hands with smart city mission for the development. As we all know, PCMC Smart Sarthi is an initiative of Pimpri Chinchwar Smart City Corporation Limited in collaboration with PCMC to create a sustainable two-way <coughs> citizen engagement platform so here we are looking for this MOU to organize collaborative activities for research related to citizen engagement, internship opportunities for our students in various projects of PCMC and Smart City, along with enabling the participation of faculty members, staff, employees and officers of SBUP and Pimpri Chinchwar Smart City on various opportunities identified by both the parties, volunteer participation in state and central level government social programs. Our student can also get engaged in live projects and ongoing smart city projects, various programs from for training, education and other knowledge based activities based on the reciprocity and mutual benefit. So we are very, very delighted and thankful to Honorable Commissioner uh, Sir for accepting our collaboration proposal and present here for the ceremony. So with this, I would like to invite Commissioner Sir and all the dignitaries for signing the MOU. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The ceremony is going to start now. <laughs> May I now request Commissioner Sir to do the honors. Respected members on the dais, uh, Professor B. Parmanandan, Pro Chancellor, his entire team, Dr. Sanjay Gandhi and Mr. Manod Mishra, the other two speakers, all the respected faculty members of the institute, various colleges, and the most difficult part of the audience, all dear students. It's not very easy to talk to students generally also because they are the only bunch who can boo you down while you are speaking or make you feel that uh, you are probably boring them to death with various gestures and other intonations. Already I see a few members dozing off and that's not for the college, that happens in every college throughout the world. So I hope not to put further more people uh, to dozing thereafter. But uh, thank you to Professor Parmanandan uh, for the kind introduction that you gave. In India, somehow I always feel, I don't know if there has been other benefit to the masters in US, but people start taking you a little bit more seriously in India than otherwise. So that has definitely been one advantage that I've had of the masters uh, that I did. Otherwise also it does add few other things to the work that I do, but that has also been a general refrain as far as that is concerned. Today is also a very important day otherwise. Can anyone tell me what is there today? 
Shaheed Divas. Yeah. So that's also a day that we've been celebrating in India for some days. Uh, probably the young generation, last time we remembered was in Rangde Basanti. And after that, uh, in between, we keep remembering. But today is also a very important day as far as our uh, country is concerned, especially now that we are celebrating 75 years of our independence. Uh, congratulations also to the Institute in general for celebrating the uh, Silver Jubilee of 25 years. Uh, so a big congratulations. <laughs> and I think the way that you've grown up with the ethos of your uh, founder, I think uh, that speaks volume of the way that uh, the institution has been groomed and the students uh, sitting here and not sitting here otherwise have been groomed by the institution. So kudos to the entire college for that. Initially, I thought I'll start with something uh, to do with startups, but then I also thought, uh, and the, this was a discussion that I had in another college uh, not many weeks ago, which was with regards to the $5 trillion economy that we keep saying. And I think it would be more prudent to talk to you in a larger framework of that uh, particular aspect, rather than just focusing it on the startups. I'm quite sure Mr. Sanjay Gandhi and Mr. Manoj Mishra would be better speakers to speak on the startup in general, what you could do, what you should do, what you should not do. But in general, I thought I could speak about the economy overall in terms of what PCMC has been trying to do in terms of what Pune has been doing. And in this whole uh, paradigm or in this whole maze or puzzle of this $5 trillion economy uh, term which you must be often hearing about, I think Maharashtra plays a, a huge role in that entire thing with almost about $1 trillion expected to come from Maharashtra by about 2030. And in that entire $1 trillion, almost about, that's about 20% of the whole, for whole of India, about 25 to 30% is expected to come from the Pune region. Even in today, Pune region ranks almost about seventh in the whole of India, with almost about $70 billion worth of, uh, you know, GDP, if I could call, for the city or the, for the region in particular. And it's been colleges like you, the whole huge skill set that we have in Pune that has really made Pune economy so vibrant, that has really made Pune as a city to look out for. In terms of the startups also, I was just uh, reading before coming here, uh, Pune was recently also ranked uh, four in the country in terms of the startup index. It ranked 90th in the world. Uh, not very good probably, we should be striving to reach top 10, top 20, which Bangalore is currently, but definitely in terms of the country, we rank about fourth in terms of providing the startup ecosystem space available for the new startups. And as far as the $5 trillion economy is concerned, I think uh, the role of city administration that PCMC has been playing, uh, that Professor Parmanandan was saying with regards to the industries being present, I think it's been a very symbiotic relationship that PCMC shares. So much so that uh, many of the industries that are there in PCMC predate the municipal corporation itself. So there are industries here, especially the Swedish industries are here from 1940, 41, 42. And the municipal corporation only came back, in, came up in 1982. So in terms of the role of the city administration, and as we are discussing, as we signed the MOU also today, in terms of the role that probably your college expects you to play, or you probably expect yourself to play, or probably we from the city administration side expect you to play, is in terms of the urban infrastructure. An urban economy, if you look at Maharashtra, currently it's about 55 to 60 percent of the people are living in the cities. I'm quite sure most of you also would be from the cities, few would be from the rural areas as well. But I'm quite sure if you ask you to raise your hands, majority of you would be from the cities as your native place. How many of you are from the cities? So I was a little bit off the mark, so it's about 60% from the cities, it looks like, and about 40% from the rural areas. But cities are, to a major extent, is what is driving the economy as of now, with a very, very loaded part from the rural areas also coming in terms of the agriculture, etc. But if you look at in terms of cities and what sort of urban infrastructure that we are trying to provide, what sort of services as a municipal corporation that we are trying to provide, I think you also as young people entering the industry should also be really aware of, and that's what your pro chancellor was also saying when we were sitting uh, down in the uh, conference hall, that our students should also learn empathy, should also learn issues about uh, social sector, should also learn issues about what's happening in the society in general and not just in terms of the placement or not just in terms of the money. 
I do disagree with him. Money is the driving power of today's generation and there are no two ways about it. Anyone who says that is not a fact is actually either bluffing himself or bluffing someone else. But apart from money, if you could also think about something else is something that I would briefly like to touch upon. In terms of what we try to do in the city, there's always a tension which is there in terms of the public infrastructure that we have to provide. Whether it is with regards to the various economic sections, do you really serve the well of economic sections in terms of the roads and the other infrastructure or do you really serve the economic strata of the society which is a little bit lower on the economic scale? And how do you balance both the things? How do you also balance uh, in terms of the various social classes that are there in the city and how do you take everyone along? How do you take disabled people along? How do you take third gender people along? How do you take other cross sections of the societies which are probably not having that sort of a representation in the society as probably their numbers would point to or if the numbers also don't point to even if they're minority they become an important part of the society that we really can't uh, forget about. And there are various such cross sections available in the society right from uh, people living in the slums, right from people living in probably our shelter homes, people living also on the footpaths and things like that. And how do you start uh, engaging with them? How do you start or pay attention to the infra that we create, to the other services that we offer, which creates a balance between these uh, two cross sections? It's also a big debate about uh, the kind of uh, hard infra that we create versus the soft infra that needs to be created. So it's not always just bridges, roads, and uh, further going forward, tunnels and underpasses that are needed. It's also about providing water as a last mile connectivity to the last person even, even living illegally in an illegal encroachment or a slum area. You can't simply say that because you're living in slum, I will not provide you basic services. We need to provide services like water and toilet, et cetera, et cetera. It's also about creating a balance between these hard infra things with the social infra or the social aspects. And that is where I would really want to probably uh, point a bit of your attention and try to pick your brains as far as that is concerned. And my honest request to you, uh, we have a lot of MBA students sitting here, probably a few BBA students also, Going forward, you'll most probably be going into uh, private sector jobs in companies as your pro chancellor again was mentioning, either be a job seeker or be a job creator. Either of those roles will take you in sectors which are outside the public sector, outside the government sector. But whenever you do, do not forget the tension that would always exist between your shareholders and your stakeholders. So please never forget your stakeholders which are uh, is a larger cross section than just your bottom line and your top line in terms of your shareholders or in terms of your management. So I think uh, I would really exhort all of you to focus on that part as well and to see where you can uh, take your stakeholders along uh, with your uh, shareholders as well. There's also always a, a really, uh, you know, a tension that we keep focusing and that is becoming more and more acute as we talk about smart cities. And I often keep saying this thing, people across the city keep saying that khadde pehle bhar lo road ke, uske baad smart city kariye. Paani pehle sabko de do, uske baad smart city kijiye. Baaki cheeze pehle kar lo, uske baad ye cheez kijiye. But I was just recently uh, seeing Rocket Boys. How many of you have seen Rocket Boys? Very few. I would earnestly request all of you to see Rocket Boys. It's a series on Sony Live. Uh, I'm not advertising for it, nor do I have any stake in that. But it's a series uh, on Vikram Sarabhai and Homi Baba and how India's space program and nuclear program came into being. And how that debate is as old as our country where people were not really believing if ISRO or space satellites would have any advantage whatsoever. Uh, there's a whole uh, sequence in that show which you know, goes on to prove that people really thought that why should we waste money in satellites and rocket launching to now when our entire 5G and just uh, yesterday Honorable Prime Minister launched the 6G mission for India to be operationalized from 2030. And it's the satellites which are uh, you know, driving the whole thing. It looks like a no-brainer to you right now, but those debates never end. The debates are still continuing as far as uh, infra is concerned and that is what we keep listening to in terms of smart city. And that is what we keep saying, that yes, we need to work on all those things. Yes, we are far from perfect as a city also and as a system also. 
roads still need uh, much of the uh, investment, much of our focus, water still needs all that, sewerage, drainage still needs all that, and those are the bread and butter issues. But if you don't think about data collection, if you don't think about the way the smart cities have really tried to be a beacon house or a lighthouse for so many things in the world, then I think we'll be missing the bus. I don't know how many of you know, there are 100 smart cities in India, each with an outlay of 1,000 crore. So almost a 1 lakh crore project is what Smart Cities Mission has been running for the past five years. It's the single most, uh, single biggest project in terms of smart cities anywhere in the world. And I can tell you with some level of pride, uh, in spite of all the criticism that the Smart City Mission has had from various quarters, and some of it rightly so, I think it has really shown a way forward for the city administrations, it has really shown a way forward for the governments also to start thinking about data collection as a really big uh, uh, you know, part of the entire thing that we keep doing. In terms of the data collection also, we in the government are famous uh, for absolutely trash data to absolutely brilliant data. So we have the entire spectrum available in the government. The data that election commission generates or the census generates or uh, various surveys generate is absolutely top notch. It's of international quality and Indian census data is amongst the best in the world. But there are a lot of other data which is almost trashy because we really don't focus about how we are collecting that data. One paradigm shift that smart cities is trying to do is trying to disrupt the entire data collection mechanism in the government sectors. And the way that it's happening is it's an automatic data collection. There's no human intervention involved. So there's no deflation of the data. There's no inflation of the data. Just to give you a small example, and we are still trying to close the entire smart city projects in uh, PCMC. It has not yet happened yet. By June end, we do intend to close all the projects. But once the projects get operationalized, for example, we've implemented a project where we've uh, automated 10,000 water meters uh, in the city. And what it will do is it will automatically collect all your uh, uh, meter readings uh, as far as water consumption is concerned. Which then also gives me a lot of leverage in terms of trying to work on that data. For example, what's the consumption pattern in the city? What's the consumption pattern with the time of the day? What's the consumption pattern with the area in the city? Which area consumes more? Which area consumes less? Which are the households which are consuming more? What is the spread across the economic cross-section? What is the spread across uh, city in terms of geography? Which then helps us play with the data going forward. So this is the paradigm shift which is happening. It is all data which is being collected which is automatic. It is not something manual someone is feeding or you go to a meter, you write how much meter reading is there, you come back and then you feed that data again in the Excel sheet. Same is happening, say, with, with regards to air quality analysis, with regards to sewage treatment plant, the uh, water that we treat in sewage, what is the quality of that water? What is the pH value, BOD, COD of that water? Also, what is the air quality parameter? And then that data is also collected automatically. Why I'm spending some time uh, with all of you, uh, we keep talking about big data, we keep talking about data analytics, we keep talking about metadata, etc., etc. To me, till now, those have been buzzwords as far as governments were concerned, but from three to four years, last three to four years, I've been observing a paradigm shift and that's why I'm calling it disruptive. Going forward, not only we will have access to data which is absolutely incorruptible, so to say, but also give us tool to analyze this data and come to a conclusion and try to find out solutions based on that. And why is it important for all of you to know this? is something that we, or I intend to talk next, is with regards to the entire startup ecosystem. And this data going forward through a sense of collaboration with the various startups, with young people like you, is where we uh, intend to leverage that data and try to find solutions as far as that data is concerned. So that we have a lot of urban problems currently, and uh, there has been a lot of uh, interest in the government as well to engage startups, to engage young people, to try to find solutions to problems which we generally otherwise, you know, uh, focus on them in a very, very longish way. Just to give you an example, there's a platform which has been started by Government of India and PCMC, Smart City is very much part of it. It's called CIX platform, where the government gives us the freedom to procure services from a startup if it solves the urban problems in the city. And we'll be coming out with those urban problems, problems very soon. I would request uh, all our MBA students sitting here, someone who really wants to go forward, 
start something new, start something on your own, what is called as a job creator, would really want you to apply for that CIX challenge. And uh, the government has given us the freedom to procure services as far as our uh, problem, uh, problem statement is concerned up till uh, about 20 lakh. So earlier we used to issue tenders or we had to issue tenders, but if it's a new novel solution, we can now directly procure that solution. And the kind of ecosystem that uh, PCMC Smart City has tried to provide uh, was a path-breaking step actually which was taken by my predecessor, Mr. Shravan Hardikar, in 2018 when we started Startup Incubation Center along with the Smart City. That incubation center started really well. Uh, we've had some successes, we've had some failures. Uh, there are a huge scope for our improvement. We need to really improve on ourselves. Uh, I was just discussing Today morning, that tea hub in uh, Telangana, I don't know how many of you know about it, in Hyderabad, Gatsibauli, that is sort of like a lighthouse for all other cities to follow, for all other states also to follow, and that is where we intend to take uh, this institution called Auto Cluster in uh, coming time for it to act as one of the innovation hubs, not for, just for the state, but for the whole country. And for it to provide a kind of an atmosphere for the startups, the one, a facilitated environment that is needed uh, for the young minds, uh, not just for networking, not just for coming on a common platform, not just for only financing. So all these things we are trying to do now also. We are trying to mentor, we are trying to create a network of startups, we are trying to bring banks on board, we are trying to have events like Hackathon. In May, we are having an event on the lines of Shark Tank, where we'll be calling up startups, we'll be calling angel investors, and we'll be trying to connect both of them and see which startups can be really funded by those angel investors. But to go beyond that and provide few services, which uh, individual startup or someone starting really own on their own money or the parents money or the bank's money might not have access to various facilities. So that is where we intend ourselves to go forward. Uh, there are a lot of startups in the PCMC Startup City Incubation Center which are doing quite well. Uh, about 16 of them are doing really well. Uh, four of them we are closely working ourselves with the smart city. One of those solutions, uh, Parking Pal, is something that we are really Currently also, this chap called Akshay Barambe, very young person, very enthusiastic guy, we are collaborating with him and trying to operationalize that parking uh, PAL app throughout the city. Uh, also, dovetailing it with that parking policy, uh, currently you would see a lot of people parking, including all the students, maybe outside colleges, etc., parking randomly on the road or in non-parking areas. Very soon we do intend to end all of that, create parking areas, create no parking zones, and in the parking zones, parking areas on the street, off the street, and then try to see how we can take it forward. So Parking Pal is just one of the examples where we are trying to collaborate. There are two other uh, 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 startups that we are trying to collaborate. One of them is working on the water hyacinth problem that you see in the rivers. It's there in Pavna, it's there in Mula. And we are trying to work out a solution as far as those water hyacinths are concerned. So I just want you to open your mind, look around, also make money, but at the same time be a part of that $5 trillion economy as far as urban infrastructure is concerned. And the problems that you face in urban infrastructure or the urban domain are really, really very diverse. They range from top-end uh, data crunching, top-end metadata use, uh, big data analytics, down to something very, very basic, how to fill potholes more efficiently, or how to solve the problems of drainage manholes. If the manhole is open, how can I get a quick automatic uh, red flag generated on my system, which will tell that so-and-so manhole in that area, the lid is not proper, that there is a problem with the lid and someone needs to go and fix that lid. Or with regards to water supply, or with regards to the sewage treatment plants, or with regards to the air quality index, or with regards to smart traffic. There's a solution that we are now implementing, uh, it's called ATCS, uh, POC, proof of concept, etc., is uh, done. We are yet to implement it uh, in the city in the uh, designated 83 traffic signals uh, that we've decided. After this ATCS, uh, your uh, speed uh, violation would be automatic. Your red light jumping would be automatic. Your not wearing of helmets, especially by students, and that's a huge problem with the students driving your bikes, that would be automatic. And all these chalans would automatically be accruing on your bike or on your vehicle. It will also create a smart way to know at a particular intersection which side has more amount of traffic so that the traffic light signal, the waiting time gets adjusted as per the traffic on that road. 
It will also help us going forward, uh, help us create use cases to provide green corridors. So on a single stretch, if I have 10 red lights and all of them have ATCS system, and if I have an ambulance passing or a, a donor vehicle carrying a, a donor organ passing, I could provide a green uh, a corridor just on the click of a button in an ICCC. So that's the kind of advantage that smart city can leverage for the city. Now it all depends on us whether we are able to leverage that data or not. Because for all the data that we keep generating, if I'm not analyzing it, if I'm not making it a part of my decision framework, it is of no use. So I would really call all of you, I would really invite all of you to be a part, and we've signed that MOU. Uh, it's a great start that we are doing. Uh, we would see further on how we can collaborate, if there are a few problems that we can float, if few of you who are interested could start working with the Smart City as a summer internship project for first year, second year, third year students based on what you can offer to us. Uh, that will also be something that uh, we need to be uh, selecting on that count. But taking all that into consideration, I think uh, the MOU that we've signed today, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very welcome uh, uh, initiative that Smart City uh, and the Smart City team has uh, got done with the entire Balaji College and I think it can really push us forward into a direction uh, where we can collaborate in a much better fashion. I'm quite sure Mr. Sanjay Gandhi, Mr. Manohar Mishra would be really uh, enlightening you with the whole startup ecosystem. Uh, we were just talking, Mr. Sanjay Gandhi has been working on those incubation centers and other things for quite some time. He has a vast experience and uh, his experience in terms of startup ecosystem will be really beneficial to all of you. Uh, Smart City has been trying to push the whole agenda, the whole envelope as far as startups are concerned. As I said in the very beginning, we have succeeded in some places, we have failed at few other, but we are trying to see how we can be a part of that entire uh, uh, energetic ecosystem. I'll close by saying that uh, there's a lot of tension currently also between development parameter and your uh, sustainability parameters. Yesterday, I don't know how many of you read uh, IPCC, gave a definitive estimate that by 2030, the temperature would have risen by 1.5 degree, and that is what everyone was fearing, and that is almost a done thing now. So by 2030, the temperature would have risen by 1.5 degree, and needless to say, multiple problems are getting created. Few of you who might be from rural background or from agriculture backgrounds might be knowing the havoc or the silent havoc that climate change is playing on the crops throughout India with regards to the rainfall pattern, with regards to the quantity of rainfall, with regards to the temporal variation of the rainfalls. And it's also an area which is very, very interesting because that is where the major funding from all PE, from all hedge funds is currently going. And that is also very important from your point of view to understand in terms of the direction that you want your career to take. So sustainable green initiatives, climate technologies, green technologies are something that the whole field is here to stay. And whether you are a job seeker or a job creator, if you try to sort of think about problems that we face as a city, as a country, as far as climate change is concerned, I think you will be headed in the right direction as far as the next 10 to 15 years are concerned. It all depends which area you want to choose, but if you do intend to choose that, I would just give you a simple number and uh, end with today all of that I had to say. Recently, we had a visit uh, to this institution called ARAI, Automotive uh, Research uh, Association Institute in Chakan. It's a research uh, institute, a testing institute, a standardizing agency for the government of India, top notch in India. It tests all sort of vehicles. And the guys in ARI were telling me that there are 600 startups in Pune area alone working on two wheelers currently, which is EV two wheelers. So that's the amount of interest that the green technology, EV mobility, green mobility is generating. And I think uh, it would really uh, behoove you to really start thinking into that direction, start thinking about green technology, start thinking about sustainability solutions, and how you can be a part of that entire journey, not just with regards to the society and the planet and the world in general, but also in terms of you trying to make good in your career. But once again, uh, thank you to SBUP uh, for calling us today here for the signing of the MOU that we had. Uh, we in PCMC have been collaborating with colleges, have been collaborating with industries and students in general. Uh, we could see further as well how to 
deepen this collaboration, take a bit of a deep dive into how we can collaborate, uh, not just vertically, but horizontally as well, in terms of the various functionalities that probably the college and the university is uh, able to provide. But once again, thank you so much. Thank you for patiently uh, listening to me and would invite all of you to take real advantage of this MOU, come up with ideas, lot of solutions and problems you know, lot of problems that we would also be floating, but come forward, try to solve those problems, earn money on the way and provide that solution to the city as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I know you people are sitting for a long time. <laughs> it is very much essential to understand students first. So Honorable Dias, uh, I will take some of the, uh, uh, definitely I will take a little time to explain you the topic which is given to me. Honorable Dias, uh, this, uh, dignitaries of the dais and students and prolific students. Thank you very much for giving me opportunity by PCMC Smart City and this college. Thank you for the management team over here and the whole team in Balaji. This is my second trip in this over here. Earlier I have come as a PMA over here. Before going to start up, I will, I will explain you some, some of the terminologies which I am going to use which all you know actually, was first terminology I will use is innovation. So what do you understand by innovation? I will explain you in one or two, two lines. If you have gone to Stephen, as Stephen, uh, Steve Jobs says, connecting two existing elements in a unique way, nobody has thought of it, is called innovation. So one of the session is happening uh, in Pune by CK Prahlad on fortune lies at the bottom of the pyramid. That concept has been taken across the globe. So over there one of the Punekar has question, have asked question to CK Prahlad what exactly or what specific you can say about Pune which is connected to Pune. So he has gone on a white marker board, he draw three dots, as Steve Jobs says. So CK Prahlad has gone to the board, white board, and he has drawn, uh, he dotted, one first dot he's right, Pune, second dot, he write automobile, and the third dot, he writes software. The thing has changed, and one of the big company has taken place into Pune, Kishor Patil was the attendees of that particular conference. He has connected in a different way these three dots, automobile, Pune, and software. And it has become the world largest company as far as the automobile software is concerned. So these conferences, this type of talks are very much essential to connect the dots. You get ideas from this only. It is definitely these talks, the, the talk which you have heard, heard from Shekhar Singh Ji right now, really, it's an excellent thought because he has connected all facets of the city in his talk. So one is innovation terminology I have explained to you. The other one is startup. When I say startup, can, can anybody will uh, place my PPT if possible? Hmm. So, uh, Startup, when I say startups, startup has got certain compliances. Give me only 15 minutes, guys, I know. Yeah, yeah, the PCMC guy I've given this, yeah. Yeah, no issues, no issues. So startup, startup has got certain compliances, as you know. Startup, if it is a, a startup which is uh, uh, any old company which has age is, uh, the company age is less than 10 years can also be a part of startup. A company which has turnover has less than 100 crore can be a part of the startup. 
the new startups, of course, will have to have certain incorporation certificate, GST certificates, the co legal compliances it has to be when it registered on a DP uh, IIT portal. The important aspect of the startup is it has to be scalable. It should create wealth. It should create employment. That are the, and it, it, it should have the scalable option is uh, social impact you can get along with the scalable option it should have the social impact so then when you can be a, a startup today uh, one of my startups uh, has been uh, launched just few days back six months back today uh, it has been launched in karnataka uh, cm has been at our store today morning but because of my commitment i am here my team is in bangalore so in uh, we uh, the startup which I have launched is very simple. It is it is towards right to repair e-waste, making organized chain of electronics and mobile repairing that the startup says. So in startups also you should have good observations is required when you start with any idea how the idea comes to your mind that is important how the third process will happen to so that you will make and make those ideas so for that you should have uh, good observation how many of you know vijay shekhar sharma correct good so what is his education while doing his education of bntc he has launched one site indiasite.net he worked on that site he sell that site as 1 million dollar after his graduation then he, he founded this 197 as a company. And this 197 initially has done that particular time, people are very much fond of getting the things on the tips. And that's why he come up with exam results, election results, breaking news, cricket scores, anything at finger of tips. That's what his 197 has started with. And that become a parent company of Paytm, you must have seen. So Paytm knows, people knows the Paytm, but you should know the journey of Vijay Shekhar Sharma. That's very important. How many of you know Dipendra Goyal? Zomato, right, right. So where he is working? Earlier, before launching Zomato. How the thought of Zomato has come up? Ben and? Correct, correct. So he was working very good. He was working with Ben and Company and he was stood in his, uh, at the lunch time he was in a queue for getting the food. So he come up with an idea, people has to wait to get the food, why not to launch something on that. And then when the Zomato has taken the birth. So everything which you see, whether it is Ola, Bhavesh Agrawal, you must be knowing the story. All these things are observed somewhere or experienced somewhere and then the idea has come up. So when you're doing startup, other than the compliances, what I say, other than the compliances, you should have this type of idea in your mind. And then the things of startup will come up and it has to be scalable. As you know, all these things are uh, scalable. The third is uh, entrepreneurship. When it's come to entrepreneurship, uh, I, I've been fortunate with Narayan Murthy in Taikon conference for uh, 30 plus minutes. So he told me for any entrepreneur, one should have good people first along with you. So he has got Nandan Nilakani and other team, you can say. So that team is important, that good people team is required whenever you start your business. <coughs> so good people, then second he say, never compromise in profitability. Always show visually the difference and then the profitability. Don't compromise in profit, don't discounting it. Huh? So profitability is very much important. The third he say, Never do partnership like 50-50. The day you do 50-50 partnership, the entrepreneurship will close someday. So at the day one, one should know who is 51 and who is 49. So always do, if you do partnership, 51 and 49 percent. One should know the boss. So in each company, there has to be one boss only. So that is what he told me and I like that thing and that is what I am following. So in your company, you should be a boss. So these are the three, four terminology I will going to use in my uh, presentation. 
if it is there otherwise i will go on okay so uh, as far as the startups are concerned you uh, i will tell some of the figures so you can get an idea what is happening in this startup ecosystem we have today 92000 plus startups registered in india out of 92000 startups 107 startups has been unicorns whenever the valuation goes beyond 1 billion dollars it comes it's called as an uh, uh, unicorn we have 80% of the districts in india has been touched with startup so 80% districts has got startup whether it is tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 out of that 47% people to 47% are women directors of these startups so there is a very good achievement as per the startups are concerned so this is the startup ecosystem i will say which is there right now now what are the support to get this uh, startup registered or what are the support by the government of india so first and foremost is support through funds it has got single window uh, single window portal startup india then it has reserved 10000 crore rupee as a seed funding for the startups it has been monitored by sidbi and uh, it is the sidbi gives those funds to venture capitalist and vc invest in your uh, startups so very big fund is there then there are credit guarantee schemes these are all without collateral i am saying the credit guarantee schemes or mudra loans or stand up loans where you get subsidies so lot of schemes are there as per the funding are concerned like we launch a store in uh, in october at pragati maidan in delhi uh, where 5g has been launched and narendra modi ji has is uh, inaugurated that exhibition today the launch has happening in karnataka where state uh, state government of karnataka is going to uh, place the margin money for the startups so they will connect 5 lakh people through this scheme this scheme is called swami vivekananda yuva shakti yojana scheme sysy today itself it is launched in morning 10 o'clock 10:30 so that type of schemes are there for every state also there are schemes so funds is not the issue the second important aspect government of india done is uh, opening up incubation centers why incubation centers because other than funds you require support legal support prototyping test up for market in terms of branding support testing support so all those things are possible through incubation centers so government has launched certain incubation under atal innovation mission aim there are four atal uh, centers in pune and pcmc area they have launched certain colleges have started incubation centers under department of science and technology there are certain uh, incubators under msme that is technology business incubator and uh, local business incubators so these are lot of incubators are coming we i have i am running two incubators now just i have got other incubation center that is atal community innovation center of course the focus and the aspect of each incubations are different like in atal community it is connected to sustainable development growth that is 17 sdgs are there so from this incubation you have to connect with those sdgs that is very important that is the difference between regular incubation center and the community innovation centers so uh, very important of uh, aspect through incubation is to generate self employment to do the startups after this still it is coming okay go next these are all finished ah earlier earlier one check okay, i will go ahead so as i told you there are two states which are ahead of us uh, one is usa which is 400 plus startups 450 uh, 440 plus unicorns and the china is there ahead of us is uh, 300 plus unicorns and they are the bigger uh, ecosystem and we are the third largest ecosystem you can say the startups uh, definitely as i told you it generate employment it generate new investments it gives better gdp 
go next go next next wait so uh, this is one of the things you are must have seen g20 so same way the s20 is has been there so in s20 these 20 countries will uh, discuss on the forums on some of the sunrise sectors i have uh, i have listened one of the question which are the sectors uh, has to be so in this s20 there are uh, five to six sectors are there uh, which will be discussed across all all the globe or all the countries who are participating so my appeal to all the students always attend this type of uh, conferences which are happening in india next next wait so these are the sunrise uh, sectors in india under startup 20 one is artificial intelligence you have seen ai is booming like anything if you see ai growth ai sector as such is uh, is going uh, go, is growing by 35.8% that is the biggest growth in ai is coming geo spectacle systems uh, you have seen the mass vaccination so it's the best example of uh, uh, or best example for this uh, technology uh, which has been used for mass vaccination where logistics and technology has been integrated the uh, semiconductor industry yes you go in any car or any uh, digital devices nowadays this semiconductors are very important so uh, importing of semi semiconductor is happening so now government has come up with lot of different schemes like design uh, design linked incentive product uh, product link incentive pli so these schemes are been launched for this semiconductor industry uh, this is this is growing like anything this uh, Uh, semiconductor industry so this is again a uh, sunrise sector is considered in s20 uh, space economy as sir told earlier also the private players are coming in uh, space economy and launching their satellites uh, pharma industry yes you have seen in pandemic how much pharma industry has been grown and yes it is growing with double digit consistently second is green energy as per the paris agreement this uh, green energy has been taken place if you see all roadways all railways or whatever things are developing nowadays has been taken care of green energy and foreign direct investments are happening in green energy at a large scale right now 7.8 billion dollars has been invested in green energy in india by uh, by fdi the e, uh, the last one they have dis uh, going to discuss in s20 is uh, Uh, mobility e-mobility you uh, you already know electrical vehicles are been a part of uh, hydraulic uh, buses are coming so this e-mobility is also important next why startups are promoted this very simple reason because you get income tax holiday for 3 years you don't have to pay capital gain tax you get uh, this 80% discounting in uh, patent registrations so lot of benefits are there if you go on into startups you get excellent funding through startups next i have already discussed it uh, the age of the the if the existing uh, uh, entrepreneur is there he can also come in startup next support has been uh, explained to you in large next So thank you thank you all of you thank you so much Good morning No it's morning because all of you are sleeping i can see i will not take much time i'll take only 5 minutes of you most of the topic has been covered by commissioner sir and uh, mr gandhi uh, the biggest challenge we start up face is of the funding issue so 20, uh, even though we have 90000 startups i can make i can bet sure 20 the 20% of the startups die because of the short of funding even though government schemes we have the lots of government schemes most of the startups don't they don't uh, you know they are not able to raise the funds which required now we are the, we are here to uh, fund the startups right from bootstrap to pre seed then seed then venture capital from series a series b series c and then ipos 
we are working with lots of investor out of uh, singapore europe and in india in recently we are uh, launching one uh, platform in india when uh, startups can register themselves and raise fund for there we don't need to you don't need have to go to uh, sharks to present your uh, pro projects just upload your information on the platform you will get everything right from legal registration from registration gst your legal compliances trademarks funding banks interest government uh, government uh, schemes everything so this is that's it from my side we'll uh, get in touch for uh, the platform thank you very much